Now, complete high school football coverage with John Apicello, Alyssa Ray, and Eric Johnson. This is WSLS First in 10. Sponsored by Magic City Auto Group, Schulz, Powers Tractor and Equipment, Spalding Equipment, and Hardee's. Week six, we appreciate the sun making a return today. Yeah, the 10 sports vehicle is out. Um, but you know what? Some games were relocated or pushed back. Actually, coming up this weekend, a pretty nice little Saturday. We're going to go to Home Depot. Yeah, maybe buy some wallpaper, maybe get some flooring, stuff like that. Maybe Bed Bath Beyond. I don't know. I don't know if we'll have enough time. That's right. Kicking it old school tonight with the best first and 10 fraternity you could ask for. No need for earmuffs tonight. By all means, check out Jeff Williamson's work on his nationally award winning first and 10 website. If it's football you need, you will find it there. Week six, we're entering district play throughout the area. Not all, but most games carrying that weight with them, which brings us to the game of the week, a battle of unbeaten's not traditional district rivals, but I guess they are now. Alyssa Ray is here to explain. Well, James River left the Pioneer District for the Three Rivers District last year, making this game not only a battle of unbeatens, but also a district clash with a couple of 2A teams. Glenver has been to the playoffs seven straight seasons. The Knights looking to build their resume in hopes to return for the first time since 2015. Of course, I had to go with the theme pink out night for breast cancer awareness. It was muddy mess for the battle of the rocking chair. Highlanders opening drive Brady Loader scores from short. Highlanders take an early 7-0 lead. Glenver driving late first quarter. Landry Gerber's pass is intercepted by Kevin Timer, but the Knights had no time to capitalize. They trailed 7-0 at the half. Third quarter, Gerber hands off to Colby Street. He picks up 20 yards for a big first down. Same drive, Street finishes what he started. He punches it in from two yards out. Touchdown, Highlanders. Two-point conversion failed, 13-0 Glenver. Ensuing kick, kickoff, Knights River Clonch has a big return, but it was a defensive battle all around. The Highlanders would come out victorious, 13-3. Of production out of your backfield. What can you say about those guys that make them so successful at what they do? The one is our offensive line, and in field conditions like this, you got to be, you got to be well, you know, good up front. And I thought our linemen played really well. They played tough. They played physical. They won the game for us. Um, on the offensive side, they opened up holes for the running back. Um, they let us get downfield and score on defense. They were, they were making plays in the backfield and open up stuff for the linebackers and DBs to come up and make plays. They definitely won the game for us today. They're the MVP. With such a muddy field, it made it difficult for both teams offensively, but Glenver's defense made some big stops when they needed it and were able to hold a tough and much improved James River squad to just two points. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw both these teams in the postseason. Abby. All right, A-Ray, from that undefeated matchup to the top team on the 10-strong pole, Blacksburg, talented and deep and undefeated with Patrick Henry in to see if they can pose a threat. So let's get you there, see if the field conditions were any better or not? Grant Johnston, long pass. Kareem Mohammed, 7 0 Bruins. PH coming back. Roy Gunn, Leroy Thomas, fourth down conversion is good. And then Gunn to Trace Pedigo for the touchdown, 7 all. But here comes Black Blacksburg. Johnston to Ty Quest Terry. And Terry doing what he does, strutting on in. Blacksburg, 28 7. They're victorious. What about Pulaski County? Four and one looking to go to five and one. Homecoming festivities tonight. They're hosting the Hidden Valley Titans. Grayson Carroll putting it in the air. Tip, pick, Gage Manning. Running it in for six. Pulaski follows it up with a quick touchdown pass. Cody Gibbs. Pulaski's up 14 0. And then the Cougars, yeah, after the flag guy, you got to let him come by. Kate Akers looking for a man to throw to. He's going to keep and find the end zone. 49 21, Pulaski. The Cougars are 5 and 1. How about Salem? Could they get back on the winning track at Christiansburg tonight? Isaiah Persinger, 24 yard gallop and go. 27 0, Salem in command. More Persinger, yeah, give him the rock. And he's in yet again, 34-0 Salem on their way to a 41-7 victory. All right, on paper, the best matchup that wasn't the game of the week looked to be Brookville, trying to stay atop the talented Seminole District. 
But after tonight, we're still in the process of reassessing this situation. The bees at the hilltoppers of EC Glass. Here we go, Glass's Drayshawn Kendrick handed off to Ty Foster. He's in 13 yards out, 7-0. Bees on the 10-yard line. Jared Glinski throws it to the corner. Glass's Warren Horsley picks it off. Brookville had four interceptions tonight. Late in the second quarter, it's Kendrick the keep and sweep 21-0 on their way to a 35-0 whitewash. Jeff Woody's gang looking good. Jefferson Forest at LCA turned out to be a score fest tonight. The Cavaliers wasting no time. Nathan Pribble, Jacob Hackworth, 65-yard jaunt later, it's 28-7. JF going to the ground attack. Pribble to Marvin Blake. 19-yard scamper. He's in the zone, 35-13. LCA had plenty of firepower as well. Joshua Nelson, 35-20. This one did not finish until the scoreboard lights blew up. 77-48. JF over LCA. Meantime, Rustburg over Amherst County, 20-15. Well, Columbus wasn't looking for America, my man, but that turned out to be pretty okay for everyone. We'll see if Radford's move to Salem Stadium turned out to be pretty okay or not. Meanwhile, the Cougars are hosting a visitor from the Wild and Wonderful. And at Franklin County, the Warriors were looking to pull off an ambush in the Eagles' nest plus this. All right, Radford and Giles in Salem Stadium tonight. A nice change to see them here on turf, but would the neutral playoff atmosphere, so to speak, benefit either team? Eric, there's no question these two teams have different styles, and I'm, I'm thinking they're both happy they're on dry, dry land, so to speak, but I don't know if it benefited either team. Yeah, two totally different styles. Benefited one side, to say the least. We think of Giles, we know it's a single wing, run heavy attack, comes quick, but Radford has a different style of their own this year, a little faster, up-tempo, with guys that are sharp at running downhill, and if that isn't enough, their defense is very stingy. Let's get you out to the highlights. A crystal clear night in the beautiful Salem. Radford set the tone early in the red zone. Check out Zane Roop on the option. Pitches it to P.J. Prelu. He says, get at me, bro. Trucks into the end zone for the score. 14-0 Bobcats. Giles defense trying to make a difference. Bryson Martin tips the pass at the line and Sky Lewis recovers but the Spartans can't capitalize on that drive. In the second quarter, it's Roop on the quarterback keeper. Shake and bake, spin move, and 38 yards to the end zone. Bobcats up 24-0 at halftime. After running the second half kickoff for more than 90 yards to the house, it's P.J. Prelu again. Scored his fourth touchdown of the game right here in the second half. Giles tried to get on the board late. They had a nice few nice runs from Gage Fleeman. Tough guy to tackle, to say the least. But Radford's defense was stout from start to finish and kept the Spartans off the board as Radford goes on for the 38-0 win. That was our problem last year. We couldn't, we uh, played the first half really well and then we couldn't get going in the second half. And I think we preached it all winter long and summer and uh, it's clicked and got a good group. The defense was good last year too. And I think we just got a, a good set of kids out there and the coaches do a great job with it. We knew it coming this whole week in practice. We knew we'd never beat them before. A couple of the coaches had never beat them before as coaches. So we wanted this one pretty bad. All right, and as you heard there, tonight's win big, big for Radford. The team's first win over Giles since 2010. We mentioned their defense has been very good. How about this? Over the past four games, they've only given up a combined 19 points after giving up around 21 there in that first game just there in week two. So, and of course, move on to five and one, and I think we'll be hearing a whole lot more about Radford in the coming weeks for sure. Well, yeah, we're always talking about their offense, but if they're shutting people out, that makes a whole different animal. Yes, indeed. All right, we're moving on. Still in the Three Rivers, Allegheny gets a challenge from the wild and wonderful as Green Briar East comes to town. And look at this mess in Allegheny. But they're going to play anyway. Here we go. Third quarter, Green Briar up 7 0. Mitchell Brookman 
Nice run right here before they haul him down, but Allegheny unable to cash in. Greenbrier's Colby Pinner outrunning everyone in the mud. 14-0 East. The Spartans get their fourth victory of this young season. Again, 14-0. How about perhaps the game of the night, Carroll County at Floyd? Scoreless into overtime at Bogle. Floyd breaks through, Caleb Urchel, 7-0 Floyd. But again, first overtime, Carroll gets their chance. Jacob Motley, keeper six, 7-7. Seven, seven. We'll go to the second overtime. Castle McMillan, hard runner throughout this game, plunging in. So now Carroll has a 14-7 lead. Floyd gets their chance. Jared Nichols to Tyler Fenton on the roll and stroll. Hits him for the touchdown. But the extra point, yes, up and not good. 14-13 Carroll, double overtime victorious tonight. Covington, top contender in the Pioneer, hosting Nelson County before district play begins. Let's get you out for a look at that one. Here come the Cougars. And their stadium looking pretty good and dry footing tonight. Simon Gibson to Juan Miller. It's 7-0. Covington playing some D. DeAndre Hyder coming up here. Yeah, pop and pick right there. And Covington would cash in. Sean Smith Jr. Tower of power. He's reeling in, yeah, rolling ball of butcher knives. 56-14 over Nelson County. Bath County by three over Pocahontas County of West Virginia and narrows with another victory, 34 to 14. What about the Mountain Empire? Fort Chiswell at Auburn tonight. Start of the fourth, Auburn up 14-12. Chiswell's Denver Brown gets some nice yards. Second effort right here. Brown's gonna take the handoff Want it, run it wide right for the touchdown. And there he goes. And the Pioneers go on to a 20 to 14 victory over Auburn. PH Glade spring over Roar would treat tonight. George Witt takes care of Honecker and Grayson County, 28 nothing over Bland. To the Piedmont and Bassett gets a visit from the Comets of Halifax County. Homecoming tonight at Bassett. Halifax could have cared less. They wanted to wreck the party. Herbert Brooks, 11 yard touchdown run on fourth down and Halifax is in control. Here come the Comets. William Davis with the slick pick returns at 37 yards for the touchdown. Comets roll 34 nothing over Bassett. Magna Vista at Franklin County tonight. J.R. Edwards gang, no one Magna Vista coming in with a talented bunch. Eagles down 7-0, pinned on their three yard line. Lanta, uh, Lante Estes taking down Miles Gilbert for a safety, it's nine nothing Magna Vista. Ensuing possession, Warriors, Lewis Taylor breaking the run, 22 yard gallop, and two plays later, the quarterback, Dryas Hairston, finds Taylor for the score, 16 nothing Magna Vista on their way to a 16-6 win. Martinsville at Tunstall tonight. Tunstall looking to go to four and one on the year. Less than three minutes in. Dylan Burnett to Clay Hardy, gets to the edge. 30 yards for the score for the Trojans. They missed the PAT. Just 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. Grayson Hardy up the middle. He's coming up inside the five. Two and a half to go in the first half. Short quarterback keeper gets the Bulldogs on the board, but Tunstall 27-13, they are victorious. GW Danville all over Patrick County, 59-0 tonight. You're crazy, man, I like you, but you're crazy. We'll see if the Vikings were the kind of crazy you need to travel to Galax in the middle of the season and come away victorious when we come back. All right, William Fleming at William Bird tonight. The Terriers 4 and 1 looking to go to 5 and 1. Sam Dantzler. Yeah, look at him book. I think we've gotten pretty used to this, haven't we? 51 yard run going to set up Nicholas Hale, the 1 yard touchdown dive. Bird up 35 nothing on their way to a 42 to nothing win. Now, obviously they're in the Blue Ridge. The Blue Ridge District games are coming up A Ray. 
So why not go to Galax and get ready for him? I guess I don't know. Right, Galax had its hands full with an undefeated Northside team, and the Viking train just keeps on rolling. All aboard! Vikings looking to move to six and zero, meeting the Maroon Tide on the road. Northside gets it going. Jalen Jackson finds his go-to target, Christian Fisher. Northside touchdown up seven nothing. More from the Vikings. The run game this time. Princeton Hall on fourth down and one finds the edge, and he is gone. Northside taking a big lead. Coach Dixon rallying the troops here, and it might be working. Cole Pickett airing it out after the pump fake. Landon Dixon wide open, wow. and Galax is on the board. We talked about his swag before, and this is what I'm talking about. Jackson keeps it himself as Northside wins 57-21 to and remains undefeated. All right, to Stanton River, where the Golden Eagles are hosting Lord Botetot in Manita. Another mud bowl here. Cavs up 2-0. Evan Eller fields the punt and returns it all the way to the five-yard line. Next play, Hunter Rice would cash it in. That would give LB a 9-0 lead. Still in the first quarter, Preston Martin on the quarterback keeper, and he is in the end zone from 10 yards out. 16-0 Cavs, and Lord Botetot served up a victory with a side of rice as he scores on the 21-yard run and route to the Cavaliers 57-7 win. Dogwood scores Gretna blanks Alta Vista 62-0. Appomattox receives a forfeit to move to 4-1, and, and Perry McClure over William Campbell 54-42. All right, thanks, Away. A Ray, Kawan Ray had 138 and two touchdowns for Rono Catholic over Hargrave and North Cross edges Blue Ridge 28-26, your final. Games coming Saturday, Rockbridge on the road at Turner Ashby, VES is hosting, and Heritage Liberty will happen Saturday at 7 p.m. Hokies trying to get back on track at Duke, coming off that monumental loss at ODU, but Duke's not buying what everyone else is trying to sell. No offense to Old Dominion because they did an incredible job. But if you play, if they played a hundred times, that only happens once is, is why I'm saying it's an outlier. All right, Duke 4-0, the Hokies 2-1 kick set for 7 p.m. from Durham. Special NBC Sports coverage of the Ryder Cup coming up 3 a.m. tomorrow morning and 6 a.m. On Sunday, Europe leading 5-3 over the USA. Uh, Daniel Hemrick taking over the 31 car in RCR from Ryan Newman. And Kurt Busch wins the first ever poll at the Roval, edging AJ Allmendinger, Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, Jimmy Johnson as Chevys dominate. Folks, that's going to do it for another week. It was a fine show indeed. We'll see you next week.